Good morning, Father Jeff Henry here for Monday 1 June, and today is a memorial for Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. I came from a, outside of the Catholic Church. I was not raised Roman Catholic. I wish I had been so raised. However, not being raised in the church, I believe, gives me a sensitivity for people who don't understand all the things that we say and do. One of those regards is regarding Mary. A lot of people, uh, I would say in the uh, evangelical churches especially, have offense, take offense at our understanding of Mary because they think that we're putting her on too high a level, too high a pedestal, as it were, with regard to her relationship with God as opposed to ours. And the problem with that is that basically many people who don't come from a Catholic, Eastern Christian, Orthodox background do not consider Mary as a person so much as a receptacle, a place from which the Son of God was born, but Mary herself was not special. We, however, on the other hand, as, as, as Catholics, look at this differently. We see a special dynamic relationship between not only just Mary and Jesus as her being the mother of Christ, but also between Mary and the church, which is what our readings bring out today. I would say most people do not have a trouble, a problem, as they follow Christ, with calling Mary what in, uh, in the Eastern churches is called the Theotokos. The Theotokos, the bearer of God. That, the, that God was born a man. That's already been accepted, so that, that makes sense to many people. But the understanding of, of Mary being the mother of the church is where the offense takes place. And the reason for it is this. Mary being the mother of God, she is doing what many women have done, which is to, to bring birth, to give birth. But to be the mother of the church is offensive because it's the thought is that well why would she be the mother of the church what would make give her that ability to do that what exactly is this relationship with mary in the church i believe in each of these readings today has some content that will help us to understand that in the first reading we we take it from genesis and in genesis we have the story of the fall actually it just follows the fall what falls after the fall and God has discovered, quote unquote, God already knew, God knows all, but God has discovered that the woman and the man, whom we call Adam and Eve in the Genesis story, have eaten the fruit. God asks the man, why did you do this? And he points to the woman. He asks the woman, why did you do this? And she points to the serpent. So God says to the serpent that you will Crawl on your, on your belly and you will eat dust and everything is, is part of your judgment. And it then says this, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. He will strike at your head while you will strike at your head while you will strike at his heel. This is viewed in the church as the earliest prophecy in the story of humanity about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Who is it that struck the devil's head and crushed it? Who crushed the devil's head? Who exactly did the devil strike on his heel? This is an emphasis in the church with regard to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. On the cru at the crucifixion, Jesus crushed the devil's head. Jesus Christ destroyed the power that the devil has over humanity with, by death. His power has been destroyed over us. He has no authority over us. As John says in his first epistle, writing to Christians, the brothers, I write to you, young men, because you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. How did we overcome the evil one? By the blood of the cross. 
which also is a reference and revelation that we overcame the devil by the word of the cross, by the blood of the cross, and by the word of our testimony. But the thing with this story is that he is speaking with regard to the woman, her seed, her offspring will do this. This also, with be, along with being a proto-evangelion, shows us in Mary that she is the new Eve, the first, the second Eve, the one that came after. And what God has done through Jesus Christ, who is the firstborn from the dead, is to reboot, reboot fallen humanity. When Jesus rose from the dead, he was the first. We will follow. We will have new life. We have been redeemed. We have been delivered from the fall, as it were. So when Mary, when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and asked her about becoming the mother of God through the Holy Spirit, and she said, I am the Lord's servant, let it be unto me as according to your word. What is happening is that Mary also is taking part in this redemption of the world by saying yes, by giving the right answer as the second Eve instead of the wrong answer, which was to give into temptation, which we see in the garden by the first Eve. Through Mary, Christ is born. Through Mary's obedience, we have this new opportunity to be raised from the dead and start over. The term for that is recapitulation to the point where Mary is now, where Eve should have been. So the next lesson we have here is in, in the Gospel of John, and it's at the crucifixion. This is out of John 19. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, John, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So, Jesus is, as it were, bestowing on John a new mother, which is Mary. And John represents the church. Christ has given to us Mary, this woman who actually gave birth to her son, Jesus Christ. And in so doing, she essentially gives birth to all who are born anew through the waters of baptism because we are all the brothers of Christ. We have now received this gift of Jesus Christ of Mary. And that's why often we Catholics honor Mary so much because she is, as it were, again, the second Eve, this one woman who gave birth to a new, a new generation, a new race, a new start. And also she is the one that gives comfort to John. Her identity is always found in relationship to Jesus Christ and also to us as Christ's adopted, adopted brothers and sisters. The Gospel, or rather the Acts of the Apostles, puts it this way. It says, while they're waiting for Pentecost, the gifting of the Spirit, it says, all these devoted themselves with one accord, together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. But Mary's in the mix. She's in the middle of everything. We saw this also at the crucifixion. She was with John right there. Mary is now here with the disciples praying and seeking. And she's even brought her, her stepsons with her into this fold, which is very interesting because it says in the Gospel of John earlier that Jesus' stepbrothers did not believe in him while he was performing his ministry. It was only later. But James becomes the bishop of Jerusalem, and James was one of Jesus' stepbrothers. So Mary brings everybody together. She's right in the middle. She's part of the experience of being a Christian, is having the Blessed Mother as your mother. And so as a person who was received into the Catholic Church in a, in, in a special way, my relationship with Mary has developed over time. It would have been easier, I believe, had I been raised in the church with this, this sense, this feeling, this ethos that Mary is part of our identity. 
But the more I pray, the more we seek God, the more we consider Mary's late relationship with Christ and what this teaching such as we looked at today reveal by experience and by thought, we, relate, we realize that Mary also is important to us. So when we say uh, as Catholics, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and at the hour of our death. All we are doing is talking to our mother. And many of us have mothers we would actually ask for these same things. Ask her to pray for us. Ask her to watch over us, as it were, with her thoughts and her compassion, because that's just what a good mother does. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks for Mary, the mother of the church, and our mother. May our relationship with her grow and grow, not separate from Jesus Christ, but in relationship with Jesus Christ and in our relationship with her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I did want to mention to you today that we will be having a Bible study tomorrow, Tuesday to June at 10 a.m. And if you look down below this YouTube video, you will see an upside down triangle. Click on that triangle and you will find a link to the Zoom site. God bless you and I hope that you have a wonderful June day.